Hello and welcome back. Today's episode comes directly from a viewer who sent me an email asking me how to unit test code which interacts with the web service. They were explaining to me that they currently have web services that are called within their code, but they have direct coupling with the service and it's causing extreme pain when we're testing and developing. So when I wrote the emailer back, I gave them more information than how to simply test with their web service. I gave them my thoughts on how to abstract away the dependencies of this service, as well as how to provide the ability to test your code which interacts with the web service. In this episode, we're going to take a look exactly what I explained to this emailer, and hopefully you'll find this information and you'll find it useful as well. So what I've done is I've created a very simple WCS service. It has two methods on it, get current date time and get Saturday after today. Uh, they don't do anything of real value, but they kind of illustrate the point. And we're going to have a consumer app that wants to consume the service and call into it. And I've got a class here, some really important business logic. It does really, really important stuff. It will get me the list of the next four Saturdays from today. And in the current implementation, you can see that I create a container here that you know t tells it that today the date is today. And I call directly into my WCF service and say, get Saturday after today, providing it the, the data. And it will return me back next Saturday. And I basically build up a list of the next four Saturdays from the current date and return that back to the caller. This is pretty straightforward. But the problem I see with this is I now can be sprinkling the knowledge of this WCF service or my web service or really any third-party dependency all throughout my code base. I don't find this good. I think it's bad because as your service changes and evolves, and as the contract changes, you're going to have to go find all the places throughout your code that has this dependency on the service and update your code accor accordingly. What I would prefer to do is add some kind of adapter around your service. That way you can lay a layer of indirection and you could code against that layer of indirection. And now nobody knows whether they're hitting a web service, a local method, uh, a remoting service, you name it. But before we start talking and taking a look at the adapter logic, let's take a look at the pain point that testing against a web service can produce. If I jump over my harness here, let's go ahead and create a unit test here, and we'll call this test when hitting the service directly. Now, what I'm going to do in my unit test here is I'm going to create a new instance of my some really important business logic class. Excuse me, that was painful. And I want to call important business logic dot get list of next four Saturdays. And it will return me back the list of next four Saturdays. However, the problem is, in order to have a valid test, you have valid known inputs to provide you known outputs. When I'm hitting this web service, I have no way to simplify this test because the date time that's going to be returned for me for my web service will change every single day, which means I've got to write code within my unit test that calculates what today is and what the expected values should be and that's not the way I want to do it. So we're not even going to finish writing this test because what do I assert? When you don't add the layer of indirection, things get pretty muddled. So let's go ahead and take a look at the way I would prefer to do this, which will allow us to wrap and create an adapter around our service, as well as pro will provide us a way to test our business logic by removing the tendency of our web service. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is come into our consumer class here. Now I'm going to create a new class here. And we are going to call this some service some service adapter. And some service adapter will be public. And what some service adapter will do is it will actually implement and consume my web service. To save some time, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this logic in. So all the service adapter does is it consumes my service, so it has the knowledge of my web service, and it will then call into the service, get Saturday after to call into the method, get Saturday after today. Now I'm going to go a step further as well. Is I'm going to go ahead and extract an interface for this. So I now have an adapter around my web service, which now gives me a layer of indirection, because if in the future 
the signature for this changes, or if the method changes, or if anything changes here, and I need to change my implementation of this, I don't have to do it all over my application. I can contain my refactory to just this one method. But not only do I, have, do I need to create an adapter around my service, I need to go to my business logic that is using my service and make a few changes here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's go ahead and create a property called I some service adapter. Let's get rid of this constructor, add a new constructor which passes in some I service adapter. And as you can see, when I call some service adapter get Saturday after today, I'm actually even abstracting away the need to pass in the data object to get the date. I'm just going to simplify the, the interface. I now have con wrapped my service, hidden it behind my adapter, my interface as well, and I can call it, and my logic stays the exact same. Now, by doing this, as I've said before, I can remove the inherent knowledge of, that, of my service, but I've also gone a step further. I can create a unit test here. And let's go ahead and push this as null, so I at least can, can, can compile. But now, I can come in and create a new, some really important business logic. And since I can pass this in, I can go one step further. Let's go ahead and we're not going to use any mocking frameworks in this, this demo. We're going to implement the methods and and we're going to say that return we're going to say that we're always going to return 1010 of 2009 I can change that here and because I can swap out a fake when I imp, you know call into my some service important service logic business logic excuse me I can now always know what to test. So going back to what I said earlier, a unit test is taking known input and, re and validating it against expect known expected output. And because I've been able to abstract away my actual service with an, on, with an interface and my adapter, I can now always assume the date that the service is going to provide for me, as well as remove the dependency on that service from my code. So I've actually done two things. So the long and short of it is external dependencies, whether they're web services, writing to file systems, whether it's writing to third-party APIs, whatever the case may be, utilize an adapter. Don't hit those directly within your code all over the place. And wrap them, and you will find that your life will become so much simpler because as you need to change and refactor down the road, points in which you have to refactor will be minimized to simply the adapter class, and you won't have to go find all implementations throughout your code base. So I hope you learned something, and until next time.